A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather with them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. I rejoice that in the midst of this horrible pandemic, with its terrible isolation, I've encountered a good number of parishioners who have grown closer to the Lord in this past year. It's been a terrible year. And yet, as a faith community, we have grown. The crowd that showed up for spring cleaning this morning was amazing. I rejoice that in the face of this pandemic, we have been resourceful. Easter Mass on the pier was awesome. Using internet resources, we've stayed connected in creative and interesting ways. But we've also learned this year that cyberspace relationships have their limits. They will never replace the real thing. A face-to-face -face smile and a hug will always be more better than an emoji. There is nothing like spending real FaceTime with those you love. So I rejoice that later this month, I'll be able to fly up to Philly to spend a few days with my family while I celebrate my golden anniversary of graduating from high school. We're getting to the point, once again, where we can be present to and in a living relationship with those people who are closest to us. And that is something, certainly, to rejoice in. The readings for this fifth Sunday of Easter are a stark reminder of what being in relationship means and what is meant by being fully connected to the life-giving energy of, at the core of our lives. The writer of Acts sheds light on the effects that a personal encounter with Christ had on St. Paul's life. Once a murderer, Saul now becomes Jesus' disciple, to the confusion of the other disciples who, knowing Saul's background, were all afraid of him. Until Barnabas relates Saul's conversion story to them. Only then, with his name changed to Paul, is he accepted among the disciples. 
Paul is now in relationship with Christ, with God, with Barnabas, and with the disciples. And these relationships have been forged through personal encounters. In the gospel, we're called to go deeper in our relationship with Jesus and stay connected to him so that we can be who we were created to be. As the branch needs to be attached to the vine, we need to be attached to Jesus as to be a better extension of God's grace and love into our world. So how do we stay connected to the vine? How do you bring this life-giving relationship with Jesus that forms the very core of the gospel into your everyday life? Is this one hour a week gathered as a faith community really going to be enough to nourish a truly intimate relationship with Jesus? Is this one hour enough to keep you focused on Jesus and to give you the strength to do the Father's will each and every day? This gospel asks us to do something very specific. It asks us to glorify the Father by bearing much fruit and becoming disciples of Jesus Christ. Specifically, I can't tell you what that might mean in the individual circumstances of your life. But let me try to give you a general overview of what I think is being asked of us in this evening's gospel. Bearing fruit means being able to be kind to others when they are unkind to you. It means being gentle when you handle situations with your family or at work, even though anger has built up inside of you and it's, a, it's about to burst. It means being able to maintain self-control, especially when you know that the words and actions you are considering are not pleasing to God or are going to tear down rather than build up. Bearing fruit for Jesus means growing spiritually and becoming more Christ-like in the life you live. It means standing firm in your faith and facing into those sinful desires that we all struggle to overcome. It means having an impact spiritually in the lives of others. It means using our resources, our time and talents to serve others. It means boldly and confidently witnessing to Jesus in our lives. God wants us to be disciples of Jesus. He wants us to share his love with the world. He wants us to be people who not only look out for their own interests, but also for the needs of others. But let's be honest. One hour a week isn't enough to keep us connected to the source of eternal life. For most of us, there needs to be some pruning away of the dead branches in our lives. And again, I can't tell you specifically how that might look. But in general, I hope this year taught us that the crazy pace of our pre-pandemic lives in many ways disconnected us with Jesus. And while technology is a great thing when it is at our service, we know that the computer screen and the smartphone has enslaved many of us if I want to be a man of prayer who remains in Jesus, then I need to prune away some of my busyness and make time for prayer. Make that time for prayer a true priority 
in my life each and every day. I need to spend real face time with Jesus. The people who make time to come to daily mass and go to confession several times a year are trying to stay connected to Jesus. The people who make time for grace at meals and prayer at the beginning and the end of the day are trying to stay connected to Jesus. The people who use the internet to explore the many varied and rich traditions of spirituality and prayer in our church are trying to stay connected to the vine. The people who have stayed connected with our live stream are true disciples of Jesus. The people like our many visitors to Tybee who make time to research where to attend Sunday Mass when they are traveling are people who are trying to stay connected to Jesus. The call of this gospel is a call to have a vital and living connection between each one of us and Jesus Christ. For it is only when we remain in Christ, when our emotions are in Christ, when our thoughts are in Christ, when our actions are in Christ, that we will bear the fruit of love and give glory to God the Father. Amen.